I left Big Law because I didn't have the guts to quit. Let me explain. When I started out in Big Law, I was the exact type of person they were looking for. I was 26 years old. I was an A student. I had come into law school straight from college. I was single with no kids. And my career was my number one priority in life. In other words, I was down to work long hours doing whatever it is they asked of me with few to no questions asked in exchange for a ridiculous paycheck, becoming what I believed it meant to be an amazing attorney, and verbal praise for doing a good job at the things they asked me to do. Now, in the first few years of practice, I would be lying if I said that the long hours didn't get to me sometimes or that the lower level junior associate tasks didn't burn me out. They definitely did, but for the most part, I ate that stuff up. I was pretty much the ideal big law associate in the sense that I really loved organizing information. I loved checking the box on the tiniest of details. I felt like there was this treasure hunting aspect to doing case law research until 3 a.m. to try to find that one case that said the thing that you needed it to say. And I really felt that sense of competitive gamification when I was looking for arguments, holes, flaws in the opposing side's position. Now, despite actually enjoying the work I was doing and getting pats on the head for being a really great associate, I realized as the years went by that I actually had another North Star. And that simply was to live life with no regrets. Which, as it turns out, is a very tall order for somebody with deeply ingrained people-pleasing tendencies. And so, pushing past what I knew people in positions of authority would frown upon, at the beginning of my fourth year as an associate, I transitioned into working remotely by the hour, meaning being paid literally only for the hours that I build. And at the time, my reasons were to have more flexibility in my life and in my location, but after two years in that arrangement at the beginning of my sixth year as an associate, I realized that despite this setup, there was a shift that was happening for me in terms of my personal satisfaction with the work I was doing. The first thing I realized as I was getting more senior in the law firm was the actual underlying content of the litigation. So when you're a junior associate, so much of what you're being assigned to do is being assigned in a vacuum in these tiny little pieces and you don't really realize what the strategy behind the entire case is or what the larger story is behind who is suing who for what. And so as the years went by, I got more familiar intimately with the type of law that I was practicing, which was patent law and specifically patent litigation. And I realized that I wasn't actually in love with patent litigation. And I don't think that it struck me as a problem for so long because I really did love the litigation aspect. I loved being strategic and creative and resourceful in making arguments and drafting briefs and requesting discovery and sort of put putting all these pieces together. And it didn't really hit me until about this time that I wasn't actually in love with the underlying subject matter, the patent law part of it. And the way that I found out that I wasn't in love with it was that we would be on these different email chains within our different case teams. And people would be sharing things like industry articles and other judicial opinions and blogs and different things like that. And I never really paid much attention because it wasn't directly related to the case that, that we were on. It was kind of more just for fun or for an FYI for the team. And at some point, I finally realized and it finally clicked for me that, oh, no, people are looking this stuff up and sharing it outside of working hours because they're just interested in it. They are totally nerding out over a patent log. And that's when it hit me that I was not nerding out over patent law and that I did not want to be looking this stuff up in my free time and that I wasn't innately curious and interested in software, technology, or hardware, or any of the things that these patents were covering. The second thing I realized was that my best guess at the time at the type of litigation that I would be most interested in was actually not civil litigation at all, meaning it wouldn't actually be practiced in a law firm. It was, in fact, human rights litigation. And the only exposure I had had to human rights litigation 
was when I was a first year uh, law student during the summer, my very first internship was at a human rights organization. And specifically, they helped applicants for asylum go through the affirmative and defensive asylum process. And so when I started at the law firm, my thought was, oh, I will also do pro bono work. I will do my billable hours and I will also take on pro bono cases. And those cases will be asylum cases. And fast forward six years and I hadn't, not only had I not done a single pro bono case, I hadn't even gone to a single one hour training for these asylum pro bono cases. Because every time I would sign up for one or put it on my calendar, inevitably work got busy and something came up that conflicted and I didn't go. And so I finally had to admit to myself that if I wanted this pro bono piece, this human rights piece to be a part of my practice in any way, that I was gonna have to actually take a big step and go and do that thing outside of working in a private law firm, which at the time was a terrifying reality and was absolutely not where I had expected this to lead. The third thing I realized, which happened very close in time, was that we had just finished a big trial. And this trial was significant for me because it was the first one where I had been a part of the trial from beginning to end, meaning from the initiation of the lawsuit all the way through jury verdict, which really doesn't happen very often. And this was the first time it had happened to me. And I remember thinking that I could spend the rest of my career honing my litigation skills, being part of dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of lawsuits, becoming a better trial attorney with every single one, and absolutely never mastering the art of litigation. But at the same time, this was the first time I had seen litigation as a full cycle, having seen all the pieces and all the ways that they fit together. And there was kind of a sense of finality about it. And I remember that after this trial, I was going to be staffed on another case by the same client with the same patents that was going to follow a very similar tra trajectory to the case that I had just been on. And for the first time in my career, looking forward to the next two years, which is about how long a case lasts from start to finish, I wasn't excited. That was the first time I didn't feel this sense of excitement like I had for all of the cases I had been staffed on before that. And so I think that having all those three pieces come together really sort of created this moment where I had to admit to myself that I was probably ready for a change, even if I didn't know if I had the confidence to actually make that change. And despite these three realizations happening all at once and seemingly pointing to the obvious conclusion that I should leave and try something new, to this day, I don't know if I would have had the guts to make that call and to take that leap because when that trial ended, I was actually let go. And what had happened was that the work in the patent group had really slowed down and they were prioritizing giving work to full-time associates, which I wasn't at the time. And so to this day, I remember getting that call and being so hurt by it and having this incredible moment of just shame and embarrassment, followed by a feeling of relief because I also didn't have to make that hard call. I didn't have to walk away from a job that had a steady paycheck that I was good at, that I could see a future with and that had all of the reasons that I quote unquote should stay or could stay in that role, especially since I really could see myself being in a law firm and, and going after a partnership and, and really making that my career path. And so with that decision made for me, that's when I transitioned into this brand new area of the law, trying something for the very first time that was my best guess at where I think I should go. And so that's the story. That's the story of how I left Big Law. I hope that it was helpful to anyone who might be going through something similar. And regardless of whether you are heading into law school, you're in law school, you're practicing as a lawyer at any of those inflection points, uh, definitely check out the description below. I'll definitely drop some resources in there to help you guys um, these are definitely my favorite things in the world to talk about. And I just think 
that your lawyering career can look so many different ways. And that is terrifying, but it's also really, really exciting. So I hope this story struck a chord uh, with some of you guys and, um, and I'll see you in the next one.